Hey everyone and welcome back to part 5. So in the last video we created a line trace so now we can actually interact with things. So in this video let's go ahead and create a door that we can actually open. So let's go ahead and add new, blueprint class, select actor, let's rename this. I'm going to call this door underscore BP, open it up. Then over in the components window let's add a new component. Let's type static mesh, call this door, there we go. So over here we can go ahead and select your door mesh if you've loaded one in, or if you don't have one and you've selected the starter content we can go ahead and search for one. So we have the static mesh door, we'll just use this for now and then later on we can always come back and change these doors for our own. So now we have this, let's go to the event graph. So the first thing we need to do is cast to the third person blueprint. Let's get rid of these two here. And we've done this before, so you guys probably already know what's coming. Let's uh, drag this out. Cast to third person character, or whatever character you're using. Then from the object wildcard, let's drag this out. Get player character. Then from as third person character, I'm going to drag this out. And then just promote to variable. And let's go ahead and rename this variable player character. Compile that. And I'm also going to comment this. And I'm casting to the third person because there's going to be some variables that we want to use from the third person. So we will come back to this in a second. Now the next thing we need to do is add the interaction interface as we did in the previous video. So we just need to go up here to the class settings. Then over in the interfaces section, let's just add and then just find whatever you called it. Mine's called the interaction underscore interface. And there we go. So now I can right click, add event, interaction. So when the interaction button is pressed, we want something to happen. So we want this door to move. So let's just drag this out, add a timeline. And then we can rename this timeline to be rotate. Then if we double click this, we can now add a float track. And then let's rename this. Rotate blend. You can call this whatever you want. So I'm going to shift and left click just to add a, a keyframe. Then over here, I'm just going to type zero and then zero. Then hold shift and left click again. Now this is going to be 1, and the value is also going to be 1. Now we can see the timeline is 5 seconds, but we're only going to be using 1 second of this. So let's go to the top here where it says length. Change this to 1. So now when the door opens, it's going to be a linear from 0 to 1, from close to open. So what we could do, we could get a little fancy and click this one. Shift, click this one. Then if we right click on one of them, and change the interpolation to automatic. We now get this sort of curve, this nice bend, so it will speed up and slow down rather than staying a constant speed. So now we have this, we've compiled it, save it. Let's close this tab down, now we don't need it. So now we can see we have this uh, rotate blend option here, which we will use. From update, we're gonna drag this out. Now we're gonna type set relative rotation. So if we go down, I want to set relative rotation for the door. Then for the new rotation, I want to right click here and just split the struct pin. So now we have these individual values we can change. So now we want to rotate this on one of these axes. We could go to the viewport and find out which one it is. If we select the door, we can see we want to rotate it on the Z. So if we can see we want it to open and close like this. So from this new option here, whatever you called it, I'm going to drag this out and then we want to multiply by a float. So now this value here becomes whatever degrees of rotation we want the door to turn. So if we just plug this into the new rotation, what we could also do as well, if we drag this out and then just promote it to a variable, let's also rename it. rotation z 
And we also want to make this editable, so I'll click this, then compile. And there we go, that's the very basic of a door opening. We obviously need to refine this, but I'm just gonna quickly show you one of the problems you'll first find. So if we drag this door into the scene, press play, and then try and open it. If we try and open this now and see what happens, nothing happens. <laughs> and if we go around, we can clearly see that the line trace isn't hitting this door. And as I mentioned in the previous video, if we click this and the line doesn't turn green after hitting the object, we know the line trace isn't interacting with the object. For example, if we click this battery here, we can see it creates a square and then goes green. So what you'd need to do is literally go through the content and we would need to find where the door mesh is. If you loaded in the door yourself, you'd keep it in a folder. Uh, but an easy way to find it, if we go back to the blueprint, change this to the viewport, select the door, and then if we hit this magnifying glass icon, then in the content browser we'll have the door selected. So we can go back, we can see we have the door selected. So for this door, let's double click it. Then all we need to do is go to collision, add box simplified collision, and there we go. So make sure we save it and then close this down. Then we can close this down and press play. If we try and open the door now, well, nothing happens since we didn't actually set a rotation value. So I'm going to go back, select the door. Here's where your rotation value will be. So it's, let's say a rotation Z. Let's say we want this to open 90 degrees. Now, if we press play, go over to the door, it opens. And if we click it again, uh, nothing happens. <laughs> so if we go back, go back to the blueprint and then go back to the event graph. So when we do this, we don't want to play it. We actually want to play from start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and left click, just disconnect this and then plug it into play from start. Then when we press the button again, we want it to reverse from end. So an easy way we can do that is adding a flip flop. So from here, drag out and now type flip flop. We can see we have flow control flip flop. So what this is going to do when we click the button, it's going to first do A. Then the next time we click the button, it's going to do B. Then we click it again, it's going to do A, B, A, B, and just switch between them. So if we take B and just plug it into the reverse from end. Now if we compile that, go back, press play. The door should now open and then close. There we go. So if you just wanted to do a basic door, that's pretty much it. But the next thing we want to do now is add a lock to this door. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to move these battery pickups out of the way. Let's move them over here. Then I'm just going to change the content browser. So I'm going to go back to content, a third person blueprint, and then blueprints. Open up the door blueprint if you've already got it open, which I do, but I'm just going to double click it again. What we could do now is add a lock. So add a condition to see uh, if, the, if the player's got a key. Another thing we could do is maybe make the doors slide open and close instead of rotating. For example, elevator doors and other sliding type doors. So what I'm going to do is just grab all this, make some space. Let's go ahead and drag this out and we're going to add a branch. Now we need to add a variable, so I'll click new. Then I'm going to type rotate and then put question mark. Just compile that. Also, I want to make this editable. And then I'm also going to drag this and just place it on top of rotation just so it moves it on top of it. And then if I grab it, just drop it onto the condition. So if rotate is true, we're just going to rotate it. If it's false, then the door should slide open. So really all we need to do is just select these like this, hit control W just to duplicate it, move it down. And then if we connect this to the flip flop, now we need to change this since we no longer need it to rotate. So I'm just going to delete that. And then from update, we want to set relative location. And again, for the door, might as well select this now and delete that as well. We don't need it. And then just like before, we can split this. So right click, split struck pin. And then we can connect this up as well. Then this variable is no longer needed for this one. We actually need to make some variables for location X, Y, or Z. 
if I go back to the viewport, so if this was a sliding door, it would be moving on the Y axis. So I doubt you'd need to move it, you know, like this or like this, but if you did, you could also add those variables as well. So go back to the event graph. We know we need to move it on the Y. And then this here, we can bring this out, promote to a variable, and this is gonna be move on the Y axis. We wanna make sure it's editable as well. Compile that. So now we've got the option, is it rotate? Yes, it is. Then you rotate it by whatever degrees you want. If it's not rotate, then you can move it by whatever degrees you want. So let's say maybe 50, see how that looks. We can see it jumps forward a little bit, but everything else is fine, I think. Let me just go back. So it probably has something to do with the fact that we're now setting the location of it as well. So what I can do is just grab this. We can say get relative location. And then we can right click on this, split the struct pin, and then connect this to the X and the Z to the Z. Compile that. Let's try it again. So now it doesn't jump forward, it just plays how it should. Let me just go ahead and add another door, Control W. Make sure we put that back in position. Move it over. So obviously we need to rotate this one round as well. So I'm gonna grab this. I'm just gonna rotate this round. 180 degrees and then move it back in position. So I'm gonna try and make a double door kind of thing. Move this over. There we go. So now if we select this door, it is gonna rotate by 90 degrees. This one is also gonna rotate, but we're gonna to wanna to flip this round. So I'll just show you what I mean. Click this, it opens. This one opens the wrong way. So all you need to do for this is just change this to minus 90. And that should work fine. So all we need to do now is create a lock for this door and then create a key pickup to then open the door. So inside the door blueprint. Now we want to add another condition to this. So before the rotate branch, we're going to add another one branch. So we need to know if uh, the door requires a key. So that's why we're going to create another variable and we'll say need key as a question. Compile that and then just drag this on here. We also want to make this a public variable so we can edit it, compile that. So once we interact with the object, we're going to see if it needs a key. If it does need a key, then we're going to need to do something else. If it doesn't need a key, then you can go ahead and just rotate it. So I'm going to disconnect this by holding control and left click. And then I'm just going to connect this and then connect the false to the branch. There we go. So if it does need a key, we need to check if the player has the key. So we need to now create a variable inside the third person character. I'll compile this, close this down for now, open up the third person character. And then what we can do from here, just create a new variable. We'll say has key one and then a question compile that. So by default, the player doesn't have a key, but then when he picks up the item, then this will turn to true. Let's go back to the door. So again, if this door does need a key, then we need to create another branch. So now we can check if the player has the key. So we need to grab the reference of the player character. We want to get the player character. So just grab this and drag it out. And then we want to get has key one like this. And then we can connect this up. So if the player does have the key, then you can go ahead and open it. So check if it's rotate or not. So you can go ahead and open it as normal. So if the player doesn't have the key, we could create a prompt. So for now, I'm just going to add a print string and then type collect key one. Compile that. So now let's test this out. So what we first need to do is select one of these doors. So down here where it says need key, we say, yes, it does need a key. Press play. So the door on the left should open fine with no problem. And this one should tell us that it needs a key. There we go. So, so no matter how many times I click this, it'll tell me you need to collect a key and it won't open. So that's exactly what we wanted. The next thing we need to do is just add that key mesh. If you guys want to download the key mesh, then I'll make sure to leave a link in the blog. 
So I'm going to go to my assets, right click, add a new folder, I'm going to call this key mesh. So I'm definitely going to have more than one key since there's going to be more doors that need to be opened. But for this example, I'm just going to bring one over. Like so. I'm just going to import it. And I also need to tweak the materials. Again, this is just a placeholder material for now. So now we have the key mesh. Let's go ahead and create a blueprint. So I'm going to go back to blueprints, right click, go to blueprint class, add an actor, and then let's call this key one underscore pickup underscore blueprint. Then we can open this up. And it's pretty much the same thing we did with the battery pickup, just with a, maybe a different model. Go to add component, static mesh. Call it key one. And then let's go to the static mesh. Search for key mesh. There we go. Now let's go to the event graph. Let's select these two, delete them. We're going to be using the event begin play. since we need to cast to the third person. So drag this out, cast to third person character from the object wildcard, grab this out, get player character. And then as the third person character, we just wanna drag this out and then promote to a variable and rename this variable, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it player character, compile it. I'm also going to comment this just to keep it tidy. So now we want to interact with this key. And since we've already created the line trace and the interface, we can just go over to the class settings, then down to interfaces, find the interface that you created. The one I created was interaction underscore interface. Now we've added this, I can right click Add event, interaction, interact. And now when the player interacts with this key, we want to change a variable. So let's grab the player character, get the player character. And if you remember, we already have that variable, that key variable. So if we grab this out, and now this time we want to set the variable. So we can type set has key one. Then plug this in. When the player interacts with the key, it's going to change this to true. And then we just want to destroy the actor. Let's compile that. So now let's make sure this works. I'm just going to grab the key, drop it into the scene. It's still far too big. So let's just make some adjustments. Now let's try this now. So we can see the key, doesn't look too good, but we can always come back and make this look better. If we first try and open the door, we can see it doesn't work. If we collect the key and then open the door. So there we go, that's pretty much the door system done. So now what we could do with this door blueprint, we could probably modify it or simplify it and turn it into drawers. So if we wanted to open drawers and then collect an item from inside it, it's pretty much the same way. The next part, that's gonna be coming on Monday. We're going to be working on the objectives and the objective description. So when we want something to happen, we'll add an objective. So that's going to be pretty simple to do. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.